Good morning, everyone. It's Emma here from Scratch. I hope you're all doing re really well this Friday. Um, we have got a treat for you today. Um, as you can see, I'm sat with Sam Marshall and her business partner, Kerry Blue. Um, Sam Marshall is a leading educator and beauty expert in the beauty industry under her business name, The Beauty Guru. And Kerry is the founder of Hair Has No Gender. And together they offer transgender and inclusivity awareness training, which is really amazing for us because as I was just saying that um, Scratch have um, written a feature on transgender and drag inclusivity in our exhibit too. So this could not be more timely for us. And I'm very excited to chat to you guys today. So welcome, Sam and Kerry. Thank you so much. This is so exciting. Lovely to meet you and lovely to see you. So I guess we could kick off with why do you think it's important to be transgender aware and inclusivity aware? Do you want to go or shall I? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> um, well, trans now is where, unfortunately, things like gay and black were like 20, 50 years ago. So although it's something that really we shouldn't have to teach people about, like how to mm. treat another human, it's something that's very current and it's something that not many people know about. Yeah. Um, also kind of tr trans people have always, people that identify as trans have always been around. Yeah. It's just that now they're allowed to come out and mix with society and be themselves. So what we need to do is kind of recognize they're there um, and then and then really understand what we can do in our businesses to make them feel welcome, really. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing that goes with it. Um, and then also there's now the extra one, just as we've got trans down, we've got non-binary people to think about and to understand. Mm -hmm. So that's something as well that I think is a subject that a lot of people don't get. Yeah. So the more we can talk about it and educate people and also introduce non-binary people to them, then the better. Amazing. Thank you so much. Kerry, did you want to add anything? On no, I think, I think Sam literally hit the nail on the head there. Like, it's just about educating people to, to understand people like myself who do identify as non-binary yeah. and, and for obviously going through work and, 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 and noticing that you may get discriminated and people don't even know they're doing it. So it's, the mm -hmm. importance of the trans awareness training is, is imperative, really. Of course, and and you were just kind of telling me beforehand, but I don't know if you want to tell the viewers here about your background, how you met, um, and how you started the training. Yeah, sure. So I um, um, identify as gay. So I uh, volunteer with the LGBT Foundation in Manchester, and through that I've met um, and mixed with lots of trans people. I mm -hmm. worked with a company in Manchester called Born, actually, which are amazing. They're like a trans yeah, I've heard of them. They look incredible. Have you? They're fabulous. Yeah. Paul is amazing. Um, so, in fact, I did a video on how to paint your own nails oh back in the God. day. Yeah. <laughs> Don't judge on it because I'm not a nail tech, but I can paint <laughs> nails. Um, yeah. So, um, so I started it through that that I realised that people didn't have the knowledge. So, as an educator, I found mm. myself automatically educating people on my waxing yeah. training course and things like that. And then I thought, okay, let's let's do a course on it because the, the demand was there and people were asking for it. Sure. But I think, as I said before, I I'm not trans myself, mm -hmm. and I, I have a lot of self doubt. That's kind of my big thing, and oh. I'm like, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Imposter syndrome, as as a lot of us do. Um, so I kind of the course has, has evolved and I've had all my trans friends helping input it because I, I can try and speak for the trans community, but I'm not trans myself. So I, I oh. need that support from it. Um, so I was teaching it, um, I say for a few months, it really developed more through lockdown and Amazing. I started doing webinars. And then someone told me about Kerry and they were like, there's someone called hair is no gender. And I was like, that's a bit <laughs> sorcery. So I, I searched for Kerry and listened to their amazing interview on Modern Barber. It's really well worth a listen if anyone wants to find it. Please, yeah. Yeah. And I reached out and I was like, you doing hair what I do in beauty. Let's let's chat. So it took Kerry forever to get back to me. <laughs> Um, and that was, I think that was in April that I messaged yeah, you, wasn't it? No, oh, no, it was before April. Because then when we were meant to be talking, it was when we got released from lockdown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that got delayed. And then eventually we had a, a, a call and we just, it just went from there, really. And then we we found there was bits. I've learned so much from Kerry. And then I think that Kerry's learned mm. bits from yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> it's, think... it's about beauty and waxing, which is hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah and so it's, it's gone from there. So now we run uh, our webinar together because power in numbers. Um, and I 
I'm now involved in Kerry's company, Hair Has No Gender. Mm -hmm. Um, as you can probably tell I'm the one that's like do this do that why don't you do this (laughs) um so we kind of we're kind of evolving all this so I've my brand that I've created is called beauty trans aware but it's like the b stands Mm -hmm. out so it's b trans aware but beauty trans aware um and then Kerry's is hair is no gender so we kind of collaborate at the moment on that Wow, I think together you two are just like a powerhouse duo. I think I'm so happy that this has come to the forefront. I think it is so, so important because, you know, beauty and hair is for everyone. Beauty and hair is for all. You know, there's no rules. Nobody should be excluded. So I'm personally so happy to do this with you guys. It's really, really rewarding. So, Kerry, I was just wondering if you could tell us a bit about your hair has no gender and how important it is. Um, but yeah, like you just said, beauty and hair definitely goes hand in hand. And I think they're yeah. massive parts of people's identity. So mm-hmm. if you're going to be able to get your hair done, feeling comfortable and to have your beauty treatments as well, it's like, it's a no brainer. But um, yeah, so hair is no gender. So I'm I'm queer. I'm non-binary. Mm-hmm. I'm from London originally, just relocated to Manchester. Mm-hmm. And um, basically before I became a barber, I lived in Brighton for a while. I wanted to get a haircut. I went to a barber shop and I was actually refused because I was identified no. as, as female. So <gasps> that, that, shocking. yeah, that, that really hit me quite hard. And it didn't happen once, it happened a few times. So then I was like, I'm going to go back to London and train as a barber because I'm sick of people not cutting yeah. my hair or asking me inappropriate questions when eventually they do cut my hair. Or they're like, oh, yeah. so you're a lesbian, you this, you that. And it was so much focus on what's down there rather than what I wanted on my head. I just didn't understand so I went to London did barbering and then when I was in barber like I've been in a couple of barber shops now and I've asked them to use my pronouns and they yeah. just have a lack of respect they're just like well you're a girl you physically look like a girl so I'm not, I'm not going to do it I'm so, so um, sorry yeah so, so I guess through through lockdown I uh I reached out to a lot of people online and I basically just said have you ever had discrimination when you've gone into a barber shop even yeah. you know in a lot of my cis straight female friends, like, you know, mm-hmm. all of them, they were still like, yeah, a lot of people say I'm too pretty. They won't cut my hair. They won't do this. You know, they're not insured. So um, I started a survey. I started to feel like I needed to create a safer space or a place where people didn't get discriminated, mm-hmm. which is I could either start a whole new barbershop and it'd be a gendered fluid one. But that doesn't that just solves the issue for that one space that I'm in mm-hmm. rather yeah. than. So then I thought, well, let's start an educational platform. Let me educate barbers that are currently here because we have such great hairstylists, barbers, beauty people. They're just not educated. So exactly. it's kind of like, how can you change your treatment list? How can you do genderize things? How can you make your staff and your public feel more comfortable in your in your in your business? And that's where Hair Is No Gender started rolling from. And then, yeah, I wrote I wrote into Modern Barber and Charlotte's amazing there at Hairdressers General. Journal. She helped me push it, and and yeah, it's where it is today. And then obviously meeting up with Sam, and oh, that just kind of all merged really well. So there's big things well, to come yet. Yeah, and then also oh. we we we're now seeing we're getting championed by people like yourself because mm. your enthusiasm when you came on here, Emma. Honestly, it's I was so in a nice. right grunt this morning. I'm not, I don't mind sharing oh. with you, and you've literally lifted my mood so much. Oh, you're thank just so you. like. but we've got the British Beauty Council behind us they've kind of endorsed us and said yeah everyone should do this course we've got Marion Newman who I'm sure you know very well yeah (laughs) who who is literally like she interviewed us actually and she's great because she's of that age where like trans people didn't really exist that much at all back then um so we're finding that people are kind of really getting oh yeah we do need this it's Mm -hmm. something we need because we did find that as a bit of a barrier originally some people like well I don't need that training I know how to treat everyone but it's kind of like but there's probably a lot you don't know but you don't exactly and I think that's the problem is that people think they're educated and they're not and they need experts like yourselves to come in and show them the right way for how to do things yeah, it's and I think exciting. it's important as a non-binary person definitely to have people come to us and say, actually, I want to learn more. Then you're becoming an ally, and that's that's yeah. so important. Exactly. And I myself, I have the wonderful opportunity to attend your training on Monday, which I'm so excited for. Yeah. I cannot wait. So I was just wondering if you could tell the viewers, you know, how can you sign up? Where can you find out about it, etc. Yeah. So uh, you can sign up by finding either of us on social media, which I'm sure we can drop somewhere, wherever this goes. Um, 
Um, it's a two hour webinar. At the end, we have a Q&A with some trans friends. Um, so we always, and they volunteer, they come on and do it voluntarily. I mean, I might give them a few free treatments now and again, but um, you know, they come on and give their time to answer questions. So it's really good. Cause as I said before, I can't answer for the whole trans community. I can only tell them what I know. Sure. Um, so we go through um, the trans umbrella and all the different terminology behind it. Cause a lot of people still say like trans, some people still say transvestite, which we don't really use. Um, and just the terminology and who is what, and you know, are drag kings and drag queens trans or who's mm -hmm. intersex? Uh, what, are, what does non-binary mean? Cis. Mm -hmm. uh, what's cisgendered, which is what I am. Uh, and yeah. so that's where your brain matches your assigned genitals at birth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to think as well. I don't know if you yeah. know, when I'm saying the language, because I still think, am I saying that right? Am I getting it right? So it's a journey. Uh, what else do we go through? Uh, how to degender your treatment list, which oh, wow. is a biggie. Yeah. Um, how, what else do we do? How to degender, how marketing to, how inclusive, to market yourself, inclusive, how to reach out to maybe trans and, and non binary people, yeah. what to say, what not to say, yeah. the use of pronouns, how we can uh, regulate them and make them just very, very simple rather than Important. something quite frightening that different generations are born into and you know like it, it's using a whole nother language and it's kind of just just being a, an open to questions mm. that people Ooh. have for their businesses and for themselves yeah absolutely so and, did you both then, sorry, sorry. sorry. Did you both sit down and be like, well, Sam's going to say this, Carrie's going to say this, and you just merge all your knowledge together? Yeah, well, yeah, it, obviously I said everything at the beginning because because I'd written the, the it, how I did it. So mm. then I'd dish out the bits. That Kerry goes, oh, I'll take that. Oh, I'll take that. So Kerry talks yeah. about body dys more, dysphoria, dysphoria, yeah. dysphoria oh, wow. um, which is obviously something that someone goes through when they're trans. Yeah. Um, and then I talk about boring things like the law and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we go through bathrooms as well that's another quite an interesting one oh, brilliant. um and yeah so we kind of just we just share it and then there's a couple of interviews that I had I pre-recorded ages ago actually I think that was during lockdown one mm -hmm. uh, one with a trans male friend one with a trans female friend and they're kind of interviews about things they've gone through and there's there's some shockers in the interviews as well which I think uh, are good some yeah. people get a bit upset by it but you know it's it's, it's eye-opening you've got to learn about it haven't you and also we found once people emotionally invest in this yeah and they get it because I said to the um we're telling you before there was a gentleman that misgendered <coughs> Kerry yesterday and I just said to him just please come on our course because you'll get it then because he's like yeah. I don't get non-binary and he he kept just saying she <sighs> her and I was like it's they them it's they them yeah so well I think if I got him on the course he'd then be like oh god I'm so sorry I did that to you I didn't realize the distress it caused of course and that sort of thing so that's why that's why the knowledge is just so powerful exactly um thank you so so much for sharing your knowledge with us today I think everyone can agree we all need more people like you um everyone should take this course because you know it's like you've been saying, even if you think you might know it all, you know, it's a likelihood you might not. Um, yeah. So it's so, so important. And yeah, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with me today. It's been absolutely You are pleasure. so welcome. And one, one key thing as well, which I've put on a post before, nails have no gender. Yes. Yeah. Nails have no gender. <laughs> a hand is a hand. Yeah. So even more reason, especially, I know this is for the nail industry to... Uh you know to get on board with it absolutely no thank you so much sam and kerry for your time it's been a pleasure you are so welcome thank you thank you take care i'm sure we'll speak soon on monday yeah yes. definitely amazing take care bye, bye. bye.